hello guys we are back welcome back to my channel those who have not yet subscribed please subscribe like share the video hit the notification bell right on the previous segment we were talking about mothers and daughter relationships you know difficult relationships but you know i did digress a bit but i feel like you know what was discussed was necessary so yes i was still in the story of my daughter um you know encouraging her to look forward to that beautiful day first day of making love and so obviously you know most parents will cringe because <laughs> they want to be dumb about it that's my feeling because they themselves had sex maybe even younger that age i mean my daughter is what 20 and she's still you know haven't had her first time so why why wouldn't i want it for her of course i do i wish for her and i said you know please you know i will help you whichever way i can to make you feel beautiful and enjoy the day and you know and i said i said you know what i wish for you it, not just for you though um obviously you know i wish for all young girls that they would that we would be more open about the subject that you know girls go through an open induction course where they are taught about their bodies how you know they feel touch you know sensation and things like that so that you know you don't get unnecessary struggles yes i understand that everyone has to go on that journey themselves but like you know the struggles that people don't have to go through they shouldn't go through them like are we not here to experience to share and pass on the experience to them so that they are better equipped and that they don't go through the necessary the unnecessary struggles but generally you know parents you know especially us women you know when we get married then we pretend we were mother teresas like for real no come on guys let's not do that shit okay because like you know i will say to my daughter i said you know what i think you've done exceptionally well because um you are 19 i said at 19 i had a baby mm -hmm. i had a baby at 19 and you guys are just so much more better equipped okay so i'm very proud of you so you you're doing okay you're doing well okay and it is so important that you you tell your children you know the things that you know you did not so well I, i'm reluctant to say failures right because you know having a child at 19 i don't regard it as a failure however it's something for her to learn that although i succeeded in it i mean here is my daughter you know she's well and we're doing great but still this is not a goal no this is not a goal neither was it a goal for me it's just that i was not informed enough okay so having said that uh, i'm not 
you know, playing any blame game, okay? I'm not playing any blame game, but it is the nature of the lack of relationship, you know, with my mother, okay? You know, things like, and I'm not being malicious when I say that, I'm just stating facts in the dynamics of the relationships. I'm talking now, my relationship with my mother, you know, the relationship I have with her, you know. Um, for an example, you know, those days, in my days, you know, those things were not spoken about. My mother never talked to me about sex. Sex was a dirty thing. It was just like, oh, if a girl does that, then you are the most horrible. Uh, you know, they will give you names and things like that. You know, things were just made ugly. Okay. When, he, you know, I came off, you know, when I went now through menstruation, I remember, you know, all that happened because there was no speaking about it. There was no you know, my mother, you know, you know, calling me or congratulating me and say, oh, now you are a grown girl. This is what it means. And all of this, it was like doomsday. You know what I mean? Like she probably, I mean, I don't know what happened, but I'm just saying because of what happened afterwards, um, she probably phoned her sister and say, yo, I, it's happening now. Um, and then the next thing, uh, I was sent to my aunt because my aunt was a nurse, okay? She didn't tell me what I'm going there for. Can you imagine the trauma, you know? So she sends me there to go to my aunt, knowing full well that I'm going there to get an injection. Do you know how embarrassing that is? So anyway, I get there and my aunt is like, okay, was on nigga injection i'm like what uh yeah family planning even her as a nurse you know they don't like sit you down and counsel you and things like that because they just don't know you know whatever they because like they didn't get it from their mothers i don't know do you know what i mean like i don't know it's the times they lived you know i don't know whatever it was messed up like that you know so now you can understand the the way it you know it creates a whole cloud on the situation and so um i fell pregnant at 19 you know look as i said before i never regretted okay it's the best thing that's happened to me. I love my daughter. I mean, like, God lives because, like, I cannot imagine any other daughter, you know. So, so absolutely, you know, things happen ultimately the way they are supposed to. Okay, so, so what I'm saying is that, um, Our mothers made these decisions out of the information they had at their disposal. And, but so today, again, parents are still making those mistakes that their parents made. Okay. So, that brings me to this topic again of difficult mother and daughter relationships. Okay, so, excuse me, as I was saying, this seems to be a theme because if you uh, just look around, a lot, but a lot of people have very, very uh, difficult, disastrous, tumultuous, um, toxic relationships with their mothers. Okay. Obviously, 
I want to say this is not nature, right? It, I don't believe because, I mean, I don't know. But it feels to me that it should be a beautiful relationship of mother and daughter working together, you know, being the matriarchs and, you know, sharing, uh, imparting, um, you know, into the next generation, supporting one another, you know, that is how the, you know, the beautiful relationship is supposed to be between a mother and a daughter. However, it, it does not always turn out that way. In fact, more often than not, these relationships become the worst relationships ever now. Because people believe that a mother and daughter relationship is supposed to be beautiful, supposed to be easy, supposed to be, you know, made in heaven. So what happens is when they are not experiencing that and they are experiencing the latter, or the former, because we talked about difficult and then beautiful. And then when, when the relationship is not beautiful, they experience or they feel shame, right? Now, people take shame to different levels, right? Um, some will be to the extent of not admitting to themselves because it's a shameful thing, right? Um, because it's weird when other, when your friends, right, are having these beautiful relationships with their mothers. Oh, oh, my mom, oh, I must phone my mother, oh, uh, my mom this, oh, my mom, and, you know, oh, my mom and I are going, you know, you know, that kind of thing. And then you start to feel like, yeah, there's something wrong with me. Why, why is my relationship, you know, not like this with my mother? Okay. And so they internalize this and they want to shut it down. And more often than not, they don't want to believe it and they keep it a secret that their relationship with their mother is not what it should be because it's shameful for them anyway okay so now before i go to my relationship with my mother I talk about my relationship with my daughters. We have a very beautiful relationship with both my daughters, open relationship, holding one another accountable. You know, they can say to me, mom, but no, mom, mm -mm. you can't say that because no, you can't do that because you told us that, you know, this, 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 which, which I completely foster and encourage, you know, because it, it's not for me, it's not do as I say, right? It's do as I do, right? So I can't be telling them to um, not do something and then I do the exact same thing. I mean, that is being hypocritical now having said that I'm also not saying that my relationship with my daughters is perfect because it's not I mean there must not be a perfect relationship because such a thing does not exist and in fact when you know they are about when my daughters you know really feel thankful and they come to me they say you know mom we thank you because you know you're such a 
beautiful mom, great mom, and you know all the things, and and you know always teaching us and giving us your experiences. You know I don't hold back. You know. And I say to them, I said, you know, I'm grateful that I can impart my experiences with you and I'm happy that you learn from it because I feel like some of the struggles, you don't need to go through them, okay? So you will, you must go through your own, like, but there's some stuff you really can get past without feeling for yourself, you know? Um, but... I also want you to know I'm fallible, I'm imperfect, I make mistakes, and you know, and but when I do make mistakes, then I apologize. I say, oh, yeah, no, I, I feel embarrassed that I actually did that. I'm sorry, you know, that's very important. Because, you know, parents have this hierarchy thing and being on a high horse to be like, Dimdala, I'm older than you. So, you d no, 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 you don't, you don't, this is my big thing. You don't pull rank, don't pull rank on children. You see, people will respect you because they respect you and my children respect me. <laughs> my children respect me because they know, they will tell me, they say, oh, uh -uh, we know. We know the boundaries. Now that's important. They know where we can laugh, we can do whatever, you know, and I, everything is cool and, you know, I'm free and, you know, I'm shocked by nothing and you know when we have because we're not like drinking people and stuff like that we don't drink but you know we do have a bar in the house and whatever so like sometimes I'm like ah oh, let's take out a bottle of champagne and we all you know have a glass that's for me important because Alcohol must not be something that's taboo um, for children. And this is the reason why they go out over drinking and making fools of themselves. is because like, parents don't teach them how to not drink, you see? Because now they have to steal this thing and pretend it's not happening. No. You know? I will tell them, no, you're, no, no, no. Drinking, I, 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 I don't enjoy the taste of alcohol but you know there's like a few I mean I'll have like a cocktail um, or you know shots uh, Jägermeisters you know when we like having fun or whatever um, once in a blue moon I mean this is not something I'm gonna be like oh I mean when we like entertain I mean, whoever drinks, drinks, it's fine. But us, we have juice. Um, or maybe once I would have a glass of wine, which I never finish. Maybe I'll have a quarter of the glass or something like that. I'm not averse to alcohol. It's just like, it's just really not my taste. It's just not my taste. So, um and when I say we drink together, it's not like, oh, we drink together. But it's like, I'm showing them it's cool. Like, you know, having a, a, a glass of champagne when we're having oysters or something. I'm like, oh, let's, let's, you know, do, you know, something like that. So they know it's not about just, you see, the problem is that why your girls, you know, go and to groove and they drink, drink, drink uh, endlessly is because you people pretend to be, oh, glory, glory, church, oh, ho, 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 and all this nonsense, right? 
but your children drink like why because anything that you make taboo you know is the thing that the children want so hence you have to you know put an end to it you know kill the 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 thing that is you know fascinating about it you know so now they've they know they've made they cocktails they, yeah, there's nothing to it it's not like now you know when they go out it's like yo hi you wine you wine they think you know you wine is a symbol their status no it's not and sex is not about yeah i want to no 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 it's fine it's okay there is nothing here that you can't you have to do in the dark there's nothing that is done in the darkness no Nyongindo must be in the light hmm? because it's fine because i'm not going to be like looking down when you now have sex or you know this is the thing and this is coming to my mind so i have to say it even though this was not part of the conversation but let me just say it because it's coming to the fore uh, for a reason i mean for me to say something about it um you know whether your child you know your girl child is into boys or into girls not your wish right it's not your wish i don't think that any parent prays for it no no nobody does okay however it is not a shame either it is not a shame because you should always love your child no matter who they love you just love them right because i see you know in my circles family where children are treated like lepers right because they have a certain sexual orientation it's not good I, and this is not a debate i don't want like i mean you can say your opinion but i'm just saying like i'm not like opening a bible debate this is not for me about bibles and what not i i'm not interested in that okay i'm interested in being a good parent okay because i think that god is also interested in that but i mean you can say you say it's fine you know for me everyone must do what makes your conscience calm and i believe my conscience to be my god okay so you know if you know your child chooses whatever sexual orientation that's their choice love them through that be or or because basically I don't believe, you know, that parents disown their children because they don't love them. I believe that they disown them because they are afraid of what people are going to say. Because you see, it's very dangerous. It's very very dangerous to run your mouth about other people's choices you see because now when it comes to your own child now what are you going to do what are you going to say because you have to now be held hostage 
by the things that you've said about other people's children. So, no, for me, everyone has a right to their choice. I would rather love my child because what is going to happen is that your child will commit suicide because you, the parent, you can see your child is gay. You can see it, but you pretend not to see it. It's a pretense because you know. Instead of, you know, I know there's boundaries there, um, but I mean, for me, if it's my child, I will ask my child because you would have noticed a lot of things. And then I will say, look, you know, I've noticed this and that and that. And I just want you to know that, I mean, I've seen that, you know, um, you know, you could be gay or whatever. And it's fine. It's fine. I, I love you. So I don't want you to hide yourself because I want you to be fully you. I want you to feel accepted. I want you to be happy. Okay. But in that same breath, I always say, to these young ones, you see, because they also have this woke mentality where they believe that they must impose all this nonsense on us, you know, because, oh dear, we don't accept and then they become the mob and all of this. So I take them on, I say, uh -uh, you don't come with your bullshit on me, okay? Give me my space too, just like I will give you... I say you, you need to respect because you also need to understand that the older generation, they don't understand, you know, these things that you are going through. So have a bit of compassion for them. Have some compassion for them where you exercise tolerance, patience, compassion on your side for the fact that they are trying. Okay? So don't enforce yourself impose yourself and you know make them feel wrong for feeling against your beliefs everyone is entitled to their own beliefs for me as long as we all respect each other's space that is for me the only boundary but you can have your beliefs i don't care um, just respect me in my space and then we're good. Okay. So, yeah, I digressed, but let me finish it off in this note because I'll go to the next segment and will rattle my mouth in the next segment. Maybe something else is going to pop up. But as we are in this subject of sexual orientation, so I remember... You know, a person I grew up with, or I don't grow up with them because he was much, at least 10 years younger than me. So I watched this person grow up. And so, so this person, you know, was like a family friend, you know. And of course, I mean, we even see pictures at, you know, uh, family functions and, you know, where... He, he really displays uh, the features, uh, you know, of uh, being gay, okay? But he's never come out or... And then, obviously, as he grew up, you know, we were still friends and, you know, he would, you know, come to my house and, you know, he would... I mean, I knew his friends were gay, Okay. So when we, he would come to my house, he would always come alone and, you know, and, you know, he was very respectful and, you know. So one day I invited him to come to, uh, for lunch at my work because now this was the day I was going to, to ask him. Not ask him as in ambush, but I wanted to like say to him, it's okay, it's fine to be gay. You mustn't hide from me because if I am going to mean anything in your life, I want you to be free when you are with me. 
Okay, so when he came, we had lunch and I said, listen, the reason why I called you today, I actually, you know, I've, I've watched you. Obviously, we, you grew in front of me and I've seen you. And the one thing that is sticking out, I've never seen you with a girlfriend. Okay, that's point number one. And the friends that you hang around with are gay friends. Okay, that's number two. All right. So, I know you've never said anything to me, um, but I just want you to know that if you are gay, I'm happy for you. I just want you to be happy, that's all. And I don't want you to live a double life. I want you, when you come to my house, you bring your boyfriend, it's fine. If you want to sleep over with him, it's fine. Okay, I'm fine with it. Like, why would I accept part of you and not all of you? You know what I mean? So, so of course, you know, people will debate, da, 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 ah, whatever, I don't care. Whatever, hey, whatever. I don't care. So, but for me, even like, you know, in my family, I don't know, I, <laughs> you know, the, the people say, you know, people have a gay da where you can detect um, whether someone is gay or not. I don't know why mine is so sharp and sensitive or whatever. So, but I, I do tend to have an eye for it. I mean, I've seen like, you know, kids in my family that I've seen. Um, and basically, I can see you from a still picture um, and be like, okay, I see the thing. And un fortunately or unfortunately, today they actually turned out to be gay. Um, but that's not the point. The point is for me, even if they ever come across this video, I just want them to feel loved. I want them to feel accepted and know that everyone should not fight for acceptance because that's like the worst thing ever in life. Okay. So, and basically stuff the people who don't accept you. Who are they? Why do you care? You know, it's your life and your happiness. And so, no, don't care for them. So, guys, there we go again. I digress, but you'll agree that the points that I'm touching on are seemingly uh, important points. So... Let's leave it here though, for now, and then go back to the initial conversation. But please like, subscribe, and tell me, you know, if you want me to expand on which subject and, you know, the things that I've touched um, in the comments, you know, uh, then we can extend the chat and, you know, dig deeper and all of that. But do subscribe, like, share, hit the notification bell and um, have a fabulous day.